Hello everyone, welcome back to the Traction YouTube channel. Welcome to week 11 of our fixed Ferrari track guide series here on iRacing. Now week 11 brings us to the wonderful Watkins Glen, but it's the cup layout without the boot. People will argue that the boot is the best part of Watkins Glen, and to be honest, I'm one of them, but the cup layout is still loads of fun. So if you've followed my track guides before, you'll know that they are not a place for hot laps. It's a slow, methodical approach to learn the circuit where I talk about my braking markers, my reference points, and the little quirks that each circuit has. So as usual, I'll show you the flying lap in full, then we'll jump in the car, do a few laps, and show you those braking markers and reference points in action. Now, the flying lap that you're about to see is on lap 10 of a run, so the tyres were super toasty, and that's a true representation of what you're going to be faced with this week here at Watkins Glen. So, let's get on track. So here we are then on the main straight here at Watkins Glen. So as usual, we've set the sim time to match the official series. So it's the 1st of April, 2022. And the time in the sim is 12 noon. We're also using the iRacing sprint setup, which is what is used in the official series. Track temperature right now is 41 degrees, one degree cooler than it was in the flying lap that you've just seen. And brake bias this week, we've gone for 52.5. There's not many places here where we're braking heavily, so a lower brake bias number doesn't really work. And all the braking that we are doing is going to be nice and gentle and progressive, so we can get away with 52.5 quite easily. So Watkins Glen, one of my favourite tracks, but unfortunately with this layout, the best part of the circuit has been cut out for me, the boot section. This, section, this uh, circuit, this layout is still really good fun. So turn number one, it's really, really easy to get greedy into turn number one. And there's all the runoff on the outside that you can use, but that's not the quickest way around. So we're going to be in fifth gear approaching turn one. We're going to be going down into third gear and we're going to be breaking in a straight line just before the 200 or just on the 200. Breaking in a straight line down to third gear. And then we're going to be turning in quite late because when we get on the gas here, we're flat out all the way up to the bus stop. So try not to clip the curb too much on the inside. The car probably will run wide when you've got warm tyres on here, but that's fine. Just get it back on before the grass. And then turn in nice and tight around turn number two. And then just as we go up the hill here, just at the end of the curb on the right, that's when we're going to start moving over to the left-hand side. Again, try not to cut this curb too much on the inside here. Be really, really smooth with your steering inputs as you go up the hill there, up through turns two, three, and four, because you don't really want to scrub off any speed. So nice, smooth, small inputs with your steering. And the run up to the bus stop, which doesn't have a corner number for some reason, but this is probably one of the, the most important parts of the circuit to get a decent lap. So we're going to be flat out up here in uh, fifth gear. And we're going to be changing down into fourth gear. And our braking marker is between 400 
and the 300. Now we want to be taking a big chunk of the right hand side curb as we enter the bus stop. So I want the car over here, we want to be taking a big chunk of this curb. And I don't like touching this curb on the left hand side here because there is a big bump, it's awful, it unsettles the car. So I tend to miss that one and cut it back for this one here. Then cut that curb and then across here we're flat out now at this point. Fourth gear and then we're going to be just braking nice and tight around here, down to third. Keep the car nice and tight and then accelerate all the way around. Try and get your right hand side wheels on the curb on the right hand side there if you can. So the run up to turn number six. Now we're going to be braking just before the 200 marker here. This is a different braking zone to the other layout because you're, you're carrying a little bit more speed. So you've got to keep that in mind. So braking just before the 200 on the other layout, my braking marker is just before the 100. So we're going to be braking here. Nice and gentle with the brakes as we go around here. And then as soon as you get to this point, get on the gas smoothly on this curb, but very careful. It's so easy to get off track there. And then back down for turn number seven, the final turn. Now you can use the end of the black barrier just to our left there as your braking marker. So when that ends, we're going to be braking down into third gear. And again, apex in this one quite late, but get on the gas just before the apex because we want to use all of this on exit and get on before the grass. Right, so we'll slowly start to speed up a bit now. So braking just before the 200, down to third gear, in a straight line, turning quite late. We'll get on the gas now at the apex. Car runs wide, get it back on before the grass. So we're going to be moving across, nice tight line around turn number two. Then at the end of the curb on the right, we're going to be just turning left. Again, be really gentle with your steering inputs around here. Don't scrub off any speed. Then move the car over to the left hand side. And we're going to be looking for the 400 board. Because between the 400 and the 300, take a big chunk of this inside curb. Miss this one. Get on the gas for this one. Leave it in fourth gear. But then nice and tight. Down to third gear. You'll see some metal railings on the right hand side there. That's your cue to get back on the gas. As long as you're on the inside there, that's your cue to get back on the gas. We'll move across to the right hand side. We're going to be breaking just before the 200. We're going to be trail braking a little bit all the way to the apex. And then when we're there, we can get on the gas just at the end of the barrier on the left. Braking before the apex, get on the accelerator, use all of this on exit. And that's a lap, really quick lap. So again, just before the 200, we'll try and pick up the pace a little bit now. Braking in a straight line. Get on the gas just before the apex, because as soon as you get on the gas there, we're not letting off until we get to the bus stop. And that's crucial for a fast lap around Watkins Glen. Always has been. Whichever layout you run. But nice and smooth with your steering inputs going up the hill. Stay to the right until we're around the corner. Then move across to the left hand side to open up the bus stop. So between the 400 and the 300. Cut the first part. Miss the first curb. Then hit the second curb. Cut across that one flat out. And then we're going to be nice and tight. Look for those metal barriers on the right hand side there. The other railings. As soon as we see those, we can get on the gas. And move across to the right. Just before the 200, we're going to be braking, trail braking to the apex. And then get on the accelerator, use the curb on exit. And again, at the end of that black barrier, we're just going to be braking. Nice and smooth. There we go. Nothing to it. We'll do one more lap. Try and go a little bit quicker. But just before the 200. On the gas before the apex. As long as you get back on before the grass, you're fine there. With the end of the curb on the right-hand side here, we're going to be moving over to the left. Nice and smooth. What was that? A 109.4. We've got a 109.1 in practice with these track temps, so uh, there's a bit more time left on the table. So between the 400 and the 300, put a big chunk of the first curb, missed that one. Put the second one on that one, flat out round here, but nice and tight. Look for the little railings on the right there, you can just see them there. As soon as you see those, you're right back on the gas. So we'll move the car over to the right just before the 200. Wheel brake to the apex and get on the accelerator. 
And then at the end of the black bodies on the left, we're going to be accelerating round. Use all of this on exit. There's a bit more grip there than you think because it is cambered. And there we go. That's a lap around Watkins Glen. Um, it's going to be really difficult this week. It's going to be quite congested, I think. But it should still be quite good fun. Now, let's talk about pit exit, pit entry, and where I think your best places are to overtake this week. So, pit exit here at Watkins Glen is really quite simple. There's the green cone. Nothing really to worry about. There's just a small bump on the right-hand turn that you need to be mindful of because that can push the car wide. So, release the pit limiter. You'll see the bumpers will go around just there. And there's the blue cone. Now you just need to keep an eye on your relative to make sure that you're not going to get sideswiped by somebody that's on a flying lap. Right, let's have a look at pit entry. Right, let's talk about pit entry. So if you need to pit in the fixed Ferrari series, it's because you've got a penalty or you've got some damage that you need to get your fast repair. Well, the pit entry here is actually quite simple. You just need to bear in mind that if somebody's really close behind you approaching the final turn, you need to make your intentions known. Either set up a button where it tells people that you're pitting in with some text on the screen or go over voice chat and let people know behind you that you're pitting in because your speed around the final turn will be a bit slower than theirs. So approach it as normal. So we're braking at the normal point. But instead of accelerating at the apex, we're going to hold the brakes a little bit longer to keep a tighter line because here is the start of pit lane where the yellow line is there so we're going to be accelerating down here and when we get to these guys on the right and just the, the end of the barrier on the right hand side that's going to be our cue to brake first gear pit limiter on and it's quite a high speed here 72 kilometers an hour so you can get it stopped in that time no problem i'll show you that now on a flying lap Okay, so pit entry on a flying lap, just to, as you would normally go around the last couple of turns. But like I mentioned, instead of accelerating at the apex of this one, we're going to be holding the brakes. Keep a nice tight line, then back on the accelerator. Wait for those guys, there they are, pit limiter on, and in the pits. Dead easy, nothing dramatic there whatsoever. Right, let's have a, a talk about where I think we can get an overtake here done at this tricky little circuit. So, overtaking here at this short version of Watkins Glen is actually quite difficult. It can be done. There are a couple of places where you can overtake. Um, but the, the best part of the track hasn't been included, the boot section. That's where a lot of the overtakes take place and a lot of the overtakes are set up. But it can be done on this version of Watkins Glen. So, turn number one, obviously, straight up the inside. It's on the back of a, a little straight, the start-finish straight. So, you can go up the inside. But I would rather wait and try and get the move done up the hill into the bus stop. So here, for me, it's all about the exit out of turn number one. So try and make somebody defend here if you can. You know, make it look as though you're going to go for an overtake. Make them take this line because they're th then their exit is going to be compromised going up the hill. And if you take your normal line, you're going to be so much quicker when you get to the top of the hill. So try and think about your exit. Try and turn in as late as you can let them defend that's fine but then we're going to get a really good run out of here sit behind them all the way up here just time it time it just right and when we get to the top of the hill we can pull out with their slipstream and either overtake them on the straight or put yourself in a really good position into the bus stop now where you overtake in the bus stop is up to you but i i prefer going on the outside line on the entry to the bus stop, which means I'm going to be over here. I think there's more chance of it getting overtake done su successfully if you take this line into the bus stop. People will automatically defend and go here. But your speed then is massively compromised on entry. Here, your entry speed is so much higher than it is for them on the inside. So I would much rather take the outside line here then hold a nice tight line and hopefully by this point the move's done. That's my advice there. As far as the rest of the circuit goes, um, any overtakes are going to be too wide, a little bit sketchy. They're going to be difficult, but you can set them up here going round turn number five. So think about your exit out of turn number five here. 
You're not going to get anything done here. You're not going to go around the outside. But think about getting a really good exit. And again, the chances are somebody's going to defend and they're going to take this inside line. But if you can hold the outside line around turn number six, and it can be done, I've done it many times, then you've got the move done in turn number seven. So hold the outside line here. And then once you've done that, there's no way back. You've got the move done. They're not going to go around the outside, turn number seven. It's just far, far too sketchy if you pinch them in to the barrier there. So they're my tips for overtaking. Be patient, wait until after turn number one. Get the move done into the bus stop on the left-hand side. Or set them up around turn number five. Around the outside, turn number six. And overtake them, turn number seven. So there we go. That's Watkins Glen done. Please let me know down below in the comments how you get on. What were your times before the guide? What were your times after? Did I help? Did I cover everything that you wanted to be covered in a track guide so next week is the final week of this track guide series and we go to suzuka what a place to sign off as always thanks for watching good luck this week keep it pinned